Man, Nikki, it sure is dark in here. Yeah. Do you have a torch? I don't know about a torch, but I could start a fire here in the fireplace. Yeah, let's start a fire. Well, let me just let me just stoke this fire here. Whoa. It's so hot in here now. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not a, a dark room anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Which happens to be the game we're talking about today. Welcome to Press Any Button. I'm Nikki. I'm Eric. Today we're talking about a game called A Dark Room. It is an open source text-based role-playing game, which is as thrilling as it sounds. (laughs) (laughs) It was originally published for web browsers by Canadian indie studio Doublespeak Games on June 10th, 2013. Later that year, it was released in the App Store for iOS devices. An Android version was released in 2016. And a Nintendo Switch version was released April 12th, 2019. Wow. A lot of versions of this game. It's on the Switch. That's interesting. (laughs) You're surprised by this. Yeah. Spoiler warning. There will be spoilers. (laughs) (laughs) This is a short, free game, so I recommend playing it before listening. Well, at least I do. Yeah, at least Eric does. <laughs> Not me. What? But if you're going to listen well, to the episode, you might as well play it or give it a go. I'll say I don't think you got to the main part that would spoil the story. So. Oh, okay. So I'll be spoiling it for you when we do this oh, episode. Oh, no. I'm so sad <laughs> about that. Uh, <laughs> you're making it very clear how you felt about this game. Is and it I, clear? Yeah. I really liked it, but I this is like my new favorite game. <laughs> I don't. I can't think wait so. to just click my mouse five billion more times and <laughs> win the game. <laughs> That's not how you win the game. <laughs> we'll go over. It. All right, yeah, are you ready to get into the history? Oh yeah, let's go. a very short game is it a short history it is a pretty short history until i get to another a certain part of it and then it will completely change and blow your mind wow i can't wait (laughs) (laughs) so a dark room was created by michael townsend the founder and lead developer of double speak games in 2013 at the time double speak games was and still mostly is just michael townsend cool are you surprised so, by the pretty much the solo developer aspect of this game? Not at all. <laughs> not at all? Okay. If I if I was going to guess, I would probably guess that one person made this game. Yeah, you would be correct. It's very minimal. <laughs> yeah. So Townsend had a full-time job uh, writing code when he created A Dark Room back in 2013. And in an interview, uh, Townsend mentioned that he had attempted to make two other games previously, but this was the first one he managed to finish. So this is really the first game he managed to finish and release. Okay. Good job, Michael Townsend. I mean, just creating a game, even if it's good or bad, that's pretty good, pretty cool accomplishment. I I do feel like that is a major accomplishment, just uh, just managing to create a game, and especially by yourself, too. Mm Mm-hmm. So when speaking of developing the mechanics of a dark room, Townsend spoke of drawing inspiration from early Sierra games like uh, Space Quest where one of the major challenges was just trying to figure out what objects you could interact with and which verbs you needed to use to interact with them. Hmm. I've never heard of Space Quest or played it. So Yeah, so you'd have like a text prompt and it would say like something, you would type in a verb like, you know, take an object or hmm. uh, turn on, you know, t- you, not turn on, but <laughs> you can tell how many text adventure games I've played. But yeah, that, that was the general idea is like you would... Uh, interact with the world through text. Ooh, yeah, sounds kind of neat. Yeah, and it kind of left a lot of different possibilities that you don't really think about nowadays because games are kind of like you explore them more spatially as opposed to exploring more of the mechanics. Yeah, well, a dark, I could see that. Yeah, A Dark Room was intended to explore more of the mechanics of what a game is. Okay, interesting. So as a more direct inspiration, Townsend specifically cited Candy Box. In an interview, he stated, about 10 minutes into it, um, Candy Box, 
I knew there was a huge potential for the genre. He goes on to talk about how it's yeah more common in games to explore spatially instead of exploring the game's mechanics themselves. So you've never played Candy Box, so no. you have no idea. Played Candy Crush? Is that the same thing? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no, yeah, totally different. Personally, like I love the Candy Box games. Okay, there's more than one of them? Yeah, there's two. Ooh. One and two. I, it's been a while since I played the first one, but I've recently went back and played the second one just... Mm-hmm just for a reference because we're going to talk about this game and in my opinion it holds up it's really good okay it's got that ASCII art style and it's got like a sense of humor it's a little bit more of a puzzle game where this comes off as more of a resource manager slash rpg Hmm. so it's a little bit different in the styles of gameplay but i can definitely understand how he was inspired by candy box cool is candy box like an old game no it's it wasn't released all that much earlier Okay. But I would describe it as like a clicker idle game. Mm-hmm. There was a whole bunch of the game that would kind of come around as you kind of went further into it. Mm. So it started off very simple and then it, you kind of got this a little bit of a world to explore. So it's kind sounds of the same. Sounds familiar. Yeah. So, <laughs> sounds, so it's kind of the same type of deal. Okay. So it took Townsend about a month to make this game. He said in previous attempts he would be a couple months in and he was barely able to scratch the surface at that point. He said uh, what helped him was severely limiting the scope. For example, he originally wanted another section to the game once you leave the planet, but he decided that he didn't have time to implement it. So that statement doesn't make a lot of sense to you. you, Yeah, once you leave the planet, what? Yeah. I only got to like a forest. (laughs) No, we're close to leaving the planet. Yeah, so you you missed quite a bit, I yeah. feel like. And I really did try to play this game. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about it when we get to the pros and <laughs> okay. the pros and cons. I'm not too worried about it yet. All right. So that was that was kind of a major spoiler. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> about a month after releasing the game, Townsend made the game completely open source. When noting that this decision slightly increased the load time of the game, he said if even one person pulls the source and learns something from it, it's worth it. Oh. So do you know what uh, open source is? Yes. That's kind of like where anyone can take the code and like modify it. Yeah. So you could. Uh, is you... it Doom like an open source yeah, game? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, anyone can pull the original code and then uh, make modifications, recompile it and make their own version of the game or tweak it or see how it works. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I always think that's it's nice of him. I think I always think it's cool when people make their their stuff open source. Yeah, let others learn from it and yeah, all and that. and he's very much into like teaching programming and trying to get others to learn and stuff like cool. that. Cool, that's nice. He seems like a stand up guy. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after making the game open source, Townsend was contacted by Amir Rajan who was responsible for porting the game to iOS, Android, and Nintendo Switch. Oh, cool. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I have a trouble like imagining this game being played on the Switch because it's just so plain and basic. I actually have the Android version if you want to huh. see how it's different. And yeah. I will say... You'll have to show me. The Android version, at least I have, is a little bit different from the web version that you played. There's okay. a little bit more story elements. I know there are also multiple endings on the... Um, on the so you uh, went ahead and paid for the, the game? Yeah, so I enjoyed it, and it was like $2 or something when cool. I got it. Okay. So I wanted to I wanted to support the author oh. like because I liked it. Yeah. The author or the creator or both, I guess. <laughs> I mean, the author is the creator. It's the same person. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay, so... On October 12th, 2020, an open source contributor, Jonathan Orsi, added audio capabilities to the browser game and created various lo-fi sound effects and ambient background music. Oh, so it didn't have any sounds or music before? Yeah, so that uh, sound and music that you're hearing when you play the game is (laughs) a recent addition. Interesting. The game received generally positive feedback and even ended up being listed as one of the best games of the year on Forbes, Paste, and Giant Bomb's website. Whoa. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty popular. Huh. In fact, there was even a month, I think, uh, when it first came out for the iOS that it was one of the most downloaded games that month. Wow. I bet you're surprised by that. I'm shocked. <laughs> I never heard of this game before, so yeah, I'm kind of shocked that it, it 
like got such good so, views. Yeah, it kind of went viral. It was also a free game. It was also like a game you could play in your web browser. The same deal with like Candy Box and Candy Box 2. And I feel like if you were fans of those games and you saw that there was another game like that, you're like, oh, yeah. You oh, know. okay. It's like, oh, sweet. Another free browser ASCII <laughs> game. This is like a whole new world to me. <laughs> Like, I had no idea about any of this that, this kind of stuff. Yeah, that, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to pick it, because it was a game type we hadn't talked about. Yeah. And I actually do like these games quite a bit. In mm -hmm. fact, I don't think I've heard of another good one that came out after A Dark Room. Hmm. Maybe yeah. the genre is still going. Maybe there are people still making these types of games. But hey, if anyone listening has heard of a, a newer one, let Eric know. Yeah. <laughs> he likes these I games. feel like... The idle games in general have kind of like turned into these like freemium games on your phone mm -hmm. that have kind of gotten a bad rap. Yeah. So you'll see games like that, like idle whatever or idle this. And it's usually it, it'll be like a clicker game, but they'll wire in like, you know, microtransactions into it. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah, a lot of them end up being pretty predatory. But yeah, yeah. this was before a lot of those predatory things were kind of like happening yeah happening so while he was right that you know it was a kind of a new genre the the types of games that came along after this i feel like weren't that great <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. kind of sad for the for people that like these kinds of games yeah for sure all right so now i need to talk about the controversy oh what controversy i bet you didn't know there was anything controversial I, about this you know game. i didn't know anything about this game so <laughs> it's all new to me all right. So shortly after being released for Nintendo Switch in 2019, the game was quickly pulled from the eStore by Nintendo. Hmm. Uh, Why? <laughs> so the reason being that as a last minute source of inspiration, Rajan had added an Easter egg to the game that allowed players to access a Ruby compiler from the game's interface. What's a Ruby compiler? So Ruby is a programming language okay. and a compiler allows you to translate the code you write into the interface into like something a machine can understand. Okay. So it allows you to essentially program on your Nintendo Switch. Oh, okay. And so where's the controversy? <laughs> that what is did a, someone do? <laughs> that is a great question. So yeah, why would this be controversial? There are a couple reasons why this is <laughs> controversial. Okay. For one, Nintendo sells a very expensive and hard to get development kit. Oh. <laughs> and bypassing that is not something Nintendo likes very much. Oh, yeah. The second reason is that, that a compiler can be used to jailbreak the device. So you, do you know what jailbreaking is? Yeah. It's kind of like bypassing the system um, things so that you can kind of do your own thing on yeah. the system. <laughs> so you're kind of working your way around how Nintendo is policing their device. Yeah. And you're going, okay, I don't care about your updates <laughs> or whatever. It's like, I just want to like be able to do my own thing with it, download mm -hmm. whatever software I want. And there is a community. There's always a community of people. I feel like with almost any device you can find that are into doing homebrew yeah. software for it. And these, you know, these can be free things. They could be like a version of Doom. <laughs> they can be like whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so there are legitimate reasons of people who may, might want to jailbreak the device. And I feel like Nintendo is probably less concerned with that and more concerned with the people who might try to jailbreak the device for reasons of like piracy. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. So does that kind of explain why that would be controversial? I guess so, Yeah. So this little game <laughs> yeah. is causing all kinds of a ruckus. Yeah, and um, it's like, okay, was he? Did he do that intentionally to like try to hurt Nintendo, or was it like an honest mistake? Because Rajan and um, Townsend both are like big, big into coding and mm -hmm. writing programs and stuff, and that was uh, part of his apology. So Rajan apologized for the incident. He said, "I deeply regret how this has blown up." These past three days have been the worst days of my life. Aww. And I don't know what to say, except I'm sorry. And all I wanted to do was allow kids and coding adults that I've forgotten the joy <laughs> to discover what I discovered 25 years ago. Oh, poor guy. So I'm not sure if he really, because, you know, it was a, in a quote, last minute source of inspiration mm -hmm. to add it. So you kind of wonder, like, okay, was he trying to, like, stick it to the man, <laughs> so to speak? Or was he, or you know, was it a legit accident where he's like, yeah, 
this just would be kind didn't of a realize cool, the scope of yeah. it. Yeah. I tend to err on the side of probably accident, but yeah, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Usually. Yeah, same. Me too. All right. I just have a few fun facts. Yay, fun facts. So Townsend and Rajan never met in person. That shouldn't really be that surprising. Yeah. Rajan lives in Dallas or near Dallas and Townsend lives near or in Ottawa. Okay. So they're pretty... I mean, there's these things called planes <laughs> and also automobiles. Well, that leads into my second fact, because even after kind of the fame of a dark room blowing up, Townsend didn't quit his full-time job. Huh. It wasn't until 2018 when he decided to dedicate himself to making games full-time. Aww. So yeah, his game released in 2013, so he would have worked like a regular full-time job another five years after that well i mean how would he quit because his game he made it free so how would he make money off of it so the web browser version is free but the ios android and switch versions you pay for oh, and he's okay. also made other games too since then oh, that's cool i'm glad he gets to do it full-time now yeah so yeah he kind of took a bit of a risk and quit his job and went full-time into making games nice living the dream and then my final fun fact, there are multiple endings and more story elements that were added to the non-browser versions of the game. So uh, the app versions? Yeah. So we didn't really, we played the web browser version, mm -hmm. so uh, we won't really have all those extra bits of information that were yeah, added. Yeah, dang. I'm so curious to know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're not. I am a, I'm a little bit. <laughs> so... That concludes my history. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I am you were able to find a lot of stuff about this little game. Yeah, uh, more than I thought I would. I am curious as to what you think the story is because <laughs> because it's so like minimalistic. <laughs> and I feel like the developer leaves a lot to your imagination and lets you kind of fill in the blanks. So I'm curious as to what you think the story is. because Oh, God. Because, I don't like being quizzed. I mean, there is more story stuff, and I feel like we didn't really see a lot of it from what we played. Okay, so all I know is that I wake up in, like, this cabin in the woods, basically, and then I guess it's my goal to, like, gather resources to be able to explore this forest that I'm in, and I conquer a bunch of caves. <laughs> 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 and uh, make friends with like the random people that live in the woods that like shack up in my shacks that I've made. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I'm like very still confused about this game. Like I don't get it at all. Yeah. I feel like uh, some of that is kind of what makes the game so good in a way mm, because really? You, you really aren't given a lot of details but uh you also left out the only other main character that you interact with <laughs> there's another main character yeah uh the woman who uh you call the builder oh so it's I like one of the first things that happens. i don't think i knew about her <laughs> it's one of the first things that happens in the game is when you start your fire a woman wanders into the room Oh, and, yeah. And then she warms up by the fire and she offers to oh. build you things. And you oh. call her the builder after that. Or I a, do? A builder. Oh, yeah, I missed that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was building all the things. Yeah, so the builder <laughs> helps the player character establish a village for wanderers to settle in. And the villagers help gather resources from that point. So eventually you're given the ability to explore the surrounding areas and find kind of a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed that, you know, you had random people coming up and attacking you. Stuff yeah, like that. it's a bunch of random things attacking me. Yeah. Beasts, mm, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so you find houses, caves, mines, villages, and about everyone you meet out in the world is hostile to you. Yeah, what's up with that? I guess because it's post-apocalyptic or whatever. Yeah, well, there's another bit to it. I think in the uh, mobile version, you're given a little bit more insight because eventually you find a, an alien ship, and once you have enough alien alloy, you can use it to leave the planet. Mm -hmm. And that's what is kind of like one of the last things that happens in the game. Man, I really did try my best to play this game. I put like 
probably five, six hours in, and you said it would only take like two hours to be. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> yeah, I really should have helped you a little bit more, I think. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. But I think the, the main idea was that you were actually part of an alien race. What? And, and the alien race actually killed a lot of the people. <laughs> what? Yeah, I did not Which get is that. one of the reasons why everyone's hostile to you. You think if you were alien, you would be stronger. Yeah. In those caves, and, you know, I'm just saying. And a lot of the villagers kind of end up as slaves. And at what? one point, the builder leaves. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty messed up. I'm shook. <laughs> That's the whole spoilers thing. This, this game is, is a lot <laughs> crazier than I thought. The spoilers you didn't really get to. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to get there, but... <laughs> I kept dying a lot. <laughs> yeah, you did die a lot. You really got to watch your health and water and uh, resources and stuff when you venture out. Yeah. You see, you got a bunch of caves, but once you got a mine, you would have gotten some other resources, and that opens up some more aspects. Oh, uh, okay. So I thought I did get a mine, but I don't know. Well, then you got to send people there to mine stuff. Oh, uh, okay. To be your slaves, basically. <laughs> well, you need other resources so you can build other stuff. Mm, yeah, uh, you're yeah. justifying it. <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty fun. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's about all I know about the story. I'm pretty sure there's more to it than that. Yeah. Huh. But like I said, we just played the free browser version of it. We should move on to pros and cons. <laughs> yeah. I have, a feeling pros. I have a feeling this is going to be a bit one-sided. Yeah. Well, all the pros are going to be you and all the cons are going to be me, probably. <laughs> Do you have a pro? This game is different and unique um the genre is not one that you see a lot so there's that okay yeah that's a pro do i like it no <laughs> <laughs> but i can appreciate something different and i appreciate people thinking outside the box yeah so one of my pros is i like the fact that you aren't given objectives <laughs> and are expected to experiment to figure out what you're supposed to do on your own <laughs> you like that yeah well the game is so simple you can usually kind of like figure out how to yeah. do stuff just by like messing and experimenting. I guess so. So to me, I like that aspect. Okay. I like the minimalism in the story and graphics. A lot of <laughs> what happens is left <laughs> to your own imagination. Sometimes when you're given less, you can use it to create a more powerful and meaningful experience. I'm laughing because your pros are like yeah. my cons. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured as yeah. much. <laughs> I'm just going to be repeating a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so yeah, less can be more sometimes. Like you can kind of use it to fuel your imagination. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Less can be more sometimes. And sometimes it, less can be boring. <laughs> in I my opinion. <laughs> I like that the game changes and expands as you play it. You start with the ability to stoke a fire and that's it. And then you kind of gain the ability to gather and manage resources and then you're left to explore the entire world yeah i mean i guess that part is kind of cool yeah it's you one know, of those i could do like the build up of like what your options are to do and kind of like the exploration part of it you know i can kind of see why people like the game yeah uh, for that for that reason and when townsend was designing it he was his basic idea was that you would kind of be doing something else and you would occasionally come oh, back to the browser okay. yeah so he'd be like yeah you would be doing something else you come back mm -hmm. and you'd find like a whole nother part of the game opened <laughs> yeah up. i mean that's easier said than done i feel like for me having a game on in the background i just kind of forget about it and then when i go back to it i'm like what was i doing again and then <laughs> you know like i don't really necessarily like playing games in the background i guess yeah um i'd rather just the game be like what i'm doing <laughs> fair enough yeah yeah and if it's not for you it's not something you need to feel bad about yeah i, I don't <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i kind of like the the idea and the aspect of it you kind of start off with not a whole lot to do and then you get to the point where the game gets slowly more and more engaging mm -hmm. and then I, for me at least i felt like towards the end of the game like I was constantly doing stuff like you go from not being engaged at all to being like really engaged. Having a lot to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the ASCII graphics. Oh God. <laughs> There's an art to using nothing but numbers and letters to try to paint a picture of a world. Yeah. It also kind of harkens back to earlier times when text graphics were literally the only option. Yeah. 
So I kind of reminds me of like the OG Oregon Trail or something like that. Yeah, it know? reminds me a lot of like uh, Lindley's Dungeon Crawl, mm-hmm. which was a, a game I really enjoyed. That was just ASCII graphics. Not my favorite. Yeah, you don't have any <laughs> games <laughs> that uh, that were ASCII only that you really enjoyed. No, I didn't even know that was a thing until recently. <laughs> <laughs> My final pro is that, you know, it's entirely free. It's open source. Like, all that's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, the fact that he didn't try to, you know, immediately quit his job to make as much as he can, he could <laughs> off of it. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's always nice when you can just kind of tell that the it's good people making the game, you know, and they're just trying to help out others and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll do a bonus fun fact. Um Donson said when he was like a kid, he took the entire game of Snake and he went through the entire like source code for it and like re uh, retyped it out and uh, onto his computer and uh, compiled it and stuff and made his own version to see how it worked just because, you know, he was really interested in how games and programming worked and stuff. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a good game. Would we ever do Snake for an episode? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's I... like name a more pop culturally significant game you know than snake oh uh, yeah like gosh i mean it'd just be more like what would you play it on one version of would you play it because there's so many versions yeah. of that game i mean you need an old nokia phone to play it on that's the best <laughs> all right so let's get into cons all right it's my time to shine <laughs> um, well i have two cons so i'll go ahead and do one of mine okay so my first con is it's a bit short like, <laughs> oh well i didn't have that as a con <laughs> to me like you know it's three four ish hours and then you leave the planet and in fact you know originally in my history talked about doing something uh having another part once you left the planet i'm that would be awesome. Hmm, yeah. he, needs, he needs to go back and add that ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be great. So what's the con you have? Well, this game is really repetitive. Like the lines of dialogue you get, it almost like made me not want to even read them anymore. Cause I'm like, oh, it's just going to be something I've already read, you know? Yeah. Oh, the room is warm. I don't know. It was just like the same lines over and over again. And then like, you know, obviously you're, clicking on things a lot you know clicking on gathering wood clicking on checking the traps it's just a lot of the same stuff and the sound even the sounds they added are kind of all the same so it's just kind of like didn't really keep my interest (laughs) because it got so repetitive that I just kind of stopped paying attention. And then if something important kind of did happen, it was like, I kind of missed it because it's just, yeah, I, I you know, you. and like the game is very slow moving too. Like at the beginning when you're just gathering wood and stuff, that's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really doesn't pick up and get kind of interesting until you can like start exploring the forest more. Yeah. Um, and th- it does get more interesting, but even when you get to the forest part, it's like, okay, here's a cave. Here's another cave. Here's the old house. Here's another old house. You're just going to get stabbed by things like bats or whatever. <laughs> and so you would have like, some more events, some more different events to happen. Yeah. And some more, uh, like different exploration options going on. Yeah. I'm not like the most patient person either. So like this game kind of requires you to have a lot of patience, especially at the beginning when you're just gathering resources and all that stuff. Yeah. And you're trying to be efficient with uh, your resources and put them towards the stuff that's going to like get you stuff the quickest. Yeah. What was your other thing that you didn't like? So I know it's a free game, but I didn't like the way Penrose was advertised in the game. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't think you should have the right to advertise another game in it, but just because it was kind of confusing, they almost made it feel like it was part of the game, part of the game, but it was actually its own separate game. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't open up in another window, I would have been like, I would have just went on playing that game and probably like yeah. moved on because I thought it was a part of the game. 
Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a weird way to do it. I think there would I think there's a better way to advertise that game within a dark room, but I Yeah, don't... so basically what happens is you're playing a dark room and a dialogue box comes up like it would in the game and then you click on it and it opens up a new window to a new game. But like yeah. the way it's done, it makes you think that it's a part of the game you're playing yeah and and when yeah when in reality it's actually more of an advertisement for yeah. this other game you know i would have liked maybe hey if you like this game here's another game that kind of relates yeah. to it and yeah. stuff like that more of something specifically telling you that hey this is something different mm-hmm. yeah and another thing is i know you really like it's called the ascii graphics yeah a-s-c-i-i okay i don't like that there's like <laughs> It's pretty much a black or white screen. It depends on if you want, if you do light mode or dark mode or whatever. Yeah, dark but mode. But it's all the just way. a screen with text. Yeah. No like characters. No. Yeah, the letters. No pictures. No illustrations. Nothing. Yeah, you paint the picture with letters and numbers. Yeah. Which is really cool. Sure, that works great. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say there's no pictures. The pictures are sometimes the text. Yeah. Or sometimes you're just describing things and you just have to use your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I just <laughs> found this game really boring and like it didn't really capture my attention. Definitely not my preferred game genre, I guess. I don't know. I'd be open to trying other ones, but this is definitely not a game I would play. Yeah, and that's on fine. My own. I honestly wasn't sure what you would think of it when I picked it because I know you sometimes you'll like one of these weird games I pick and other yeah. times I'll be like, Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Look, I always like giving things to try because honestly, I never know what I'm going to like until I play it. And there's some, there's been a lot of games where you picked it and I'm yeah. like, I don't think I'll like this. And then I really like it, you know, like slay the spire, like Hades, you know, yeah, those kind of games. Like I didn't think I would like them and then I, I really, really enjoyed them. So I always appreciate you at least picking something new and bringing something to my attention that I didn't even know was a thing, you know? So I do appreciate that, but this one was not a hit for me. Yeah. It was a mess. (laughs) That's fine. No worries. (laughs) I definitely see you liking it and some of our other friends. I'm sure Michael would like, Michael Cardinal would probably like this game. Oh, he loves this game, yeah. Oh, he's please play it. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) which, I mean, yeah. So, like, I could definitely see, I can see, like, why it's popular and why a lot of people liked it and why it went viral. But, unfortunately, not really something I enjoyed that much. There's a lot lot of other games (laughs) I'd rather be playing. (laughs) I gotcha. So, that's all my cons. Do you have any more? Nope, that's it. You want to move on to strategy? Sure. Gather all the wood. Just gather as much wood as possible because <laughs> you need wood. It's like the base of everything else that you need pretty uh, much because yeah. you can't really build anything without wood, like your hut, your lodge, your smoke house. Your, you can't even keep the room warm without wood. So it's like one of my strategies was to leave the game on all day, all night. So I had like... <laughs> A million pieces of wood, and I never had to worry about it. Yeah. It was a lot less stressful when you didn't have to get <laughs> worry about gathering wood. Yeah, I feel like fur is pretty important, too. Yeah. So, yeah, wood and fur. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you do start getting into other important resources. So, yeah. if you do that for wood, it's like eventually you get to a point where you have to build other stuff that's mm-hmm. not just wood. And so it doesn't quite work. Like you're not going to be able, be able to build everything in the game. Well, I know, but I'm just saying if you have a good solid <laughs> stockpile of wood, that is a very good start. Yeah. To, that, no, it is. To move on to other stuff. Yeah. So if you're Nikki, leave your villagers <laughs> gathering wood for... All day, all night. All day, all night. And then you got a lot of wood. Yeah. <laughs> and you can... Or, you I think know... I literally had like a million pieces of wood. <laughs> but, you know, it really doesn't take that long to gather the wood you need to do stuff. So... It does, If though. you just kind of leave it in the background, you can probably get enough and not too long of a time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, also, hyper mode. There's a option at the bottom oh, yeah. called hyper mode where it, like, doubles the time so you can play the game a lot faster. Yeah. That's, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool, eh? Yeah. 
So did you just turn Canadian? <laughs> yeah, a little pretty bit. Pretty cool, eh? <laughs> I was in. Spo- how about that? How about that? <laughs> I was inspired by Michael Townsend. I think. <laughs> so when you're deciding on jobs for your villagers, the game is balanced well enough so that you can keep almost all your resources as a net positive per interval. Mm-hmm. And the game will even tell you whether you're gaining or losing a particular resource over time if you hover over it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was helpful. So I like that. So, yeah, it's like, okay, uh, do I have enough wood coming in to, like, cover all these other things I'm trying to gather? Because, like, if you increase, like, your tanner, it might be uh, negative five meats per ten seconds. But plus, you know, five fur. Or whatever it is. You the, know, the, tanner, the tanner is tanning fur, so it'd be oh. minus fur and plus leather. You know, whatever it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, just different people. Like, it'll be like, plus this, neg- minus this yeah. every 10 seconds. So you have to, yeah, make sure you're in the positive. But yeah, you can get enough villagers to uh, to kind of balance it out. In fact, you can actually, in the mobile version or in the app version, you can get a secret ending if you don't build any huts at all and you just gather all the resources yourself. What? Wow, that would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're really hardcore into gathering wood and checking your traps. Yeah, that'd keep you busy for right. sure. Keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you got? Well, considering I just died a whole bunch and I really wasn't able to get very far in this game. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the most qualified person to give strategy tips. So yeah. I'm going to let you keep going with that. So dying is something you want to avoid doing, obviously. <laughs> obviously. That's, that's like video games 101 right yeah, there. Yeah, because you lose everything you're carrying. <laughs> like if you have any weapons or anything, you'll lose that weapon. Yeah. Yeah, or any items you're carrying. So... Yeah, you don't want to die. You also lose any <laughs> map parts you explore. Kind of go back to being in the dark. Oh, if really? You die. Yeah. Oh. So you don't even gain. I thought, that, I thought mine kind of stayed, but I don't know. Maybe I just am remembering it wrong. <laughs> yeah. For the most part, I think you can buy maps from some of the people mm-hmm. too. So. Oh, yeah. One time I bought like 50 maps from a dude because I was like, I'm kind of covering this map. <laughs> and I had a bunch of resources. So I was just like spending yeah. all my resources willy nilly. Like, I'm rich. <laughs> get whatever I want. <laughs> my slave villagers gathered all these resources. Yeah, <laughs> man. You're actually pretty evil in this yeah, game. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> so establishing outposts is pretty important uh, when exploring the map. You gain outposts by clearing caves. Uh, mm-hmm. This will give you spots on the map where you can refill your water and gain some meat. So you can kind of use that to venture further out without yeah. dying. Because you don't want to die because, again, yeah. you'll lose the maps you explored. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, you know, gather alien alloy for your spaceship and take off. Yeah. Did you ever take off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> Wow. Smart. And that's how you win the game? Yeah. And actually, once you, I don't think you actually have to do a lot once you find your spaceship once you start getting alien alloy and stuff Mm -hmm. like you don't have to explore the entire map or anything huh interesting so maybe i was closer to being beating it than i thought (laughs) yeah there are a few more (laughs) there are a few more resources you needed i don't think you got any of the the coal or the um the iron or anything no i didn't yeah oh well (laughs) it's fine or is it steel i forget it it doesn't matter (laughs) All right, so any more strategy? No, I think that's all. Okay, future. You have anything for the future? No, not really. I didn't really find much. Did you? So, yeah, I saw that their latest game was uh, Penrose. I haven't had a chance to play it, but it actually does sound pretty interesting. It's described as an interactive novella where you can Hmm. change the story as it's being written. Oh, yeah, that sounds different from this one. So it's also, well, it sounds also like a text adventure game, but just a different take on it. Yeah. Which, it does sound cool, though. I might like something like that a little bit more. You think so? this one. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to pick in. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I think we should uh, go play some Candy Box, too, after this. Oh, gosh. No, it's not. <laughs> Let's play Candy Crush. <laughs> I, got a, I got a hankering for a Candy Box, babe. <laughs> How about you just eat some candy? We've got plenty of that around here. Okay, so I think everybody needs to know, how did he do on the challenge of, let's see, beating the game? Beating the game. (laughs) Terrible, apparently. Terrible. Yeah, terrible. How far did he get? 
I got like 50% of the map uncovered. How many caves did you turn into Um, outposts? I think I had like three outposts. Okay, so that's not a lot, but you know. Oh, that's not? Dang, it felt like a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I thought that was good. Oh, well, yeah. I really did try. You said it would only take like two to three hours to beat the game. I played double that I said, and I still did not beat the game. I said three to four hours. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I played like six hours and I wasn't even close. Yeah, I probably could have helped you a little bit more, I think. So, yeah, I'll be rapping, I guess. Boo. All right. <laughs> you made it too hard, Eric. <laughs> well, let's hear that rap. in here must be some beasts in the atmosphere what sounds good chartreuse with smear i'll be so high they call me buzz like you hand me a beer gonna spread some cheer maybe hunt some deer with my bone spear takes a village let's be clear it's been a year better not leer walk into the forest what do i hear oh shit it's my biggest fear and i'm out of gear the end is near shed one last tear ah! So, Eric, what do you think of my rap? <laughs> that was uh, pretty dramatic how you <laughs> died at the end, Nikki. You know, I was just trying to write from my experience of this game, and I died a lot. That's very... A lot. <laughs> yeah, that's very clear. Every time I went in the forest. A dang forest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Eric, are you curious as to what game that I'm picking Wheel for of Fortune for the episode? Nintendo. <laughs> Will of Fortune? Why would you think that? Because we tried to play it the other day and we couldn't. Oh, but now we got that new NES player. Yeah, so now we should be able to play it. Yeah. That's why I think you picked that. Yeah, it's not what I picked though. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am thrown for a loop. Yeah. Any other guesses you don't want to guess? Is it an NES game? No. Is it a Switch game? Yeah. Is it Disney Dream My Valley again? <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> no, I decided to go with a game, a co-op game, because we haven't done a co-op game Ooh, yet this nice. season. It's made by the same people that make Overcooked. Do Is it guess, uh, Moving Out? Now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to pick a game called Moving Out. It's a co-op game. I mean, you can play it by yourself, but it's meant to be a co-op game mostly where you play you play as a moving company and you like pack up people's houses and stuff. Yeah. some uh, We did play a little bit of this game already and it was fun. Yeah. But yeah, it's like the co-op aspect is like trying to move all this furniture, furniture together. together. And yeah. some things you have to kind of coordinate mm-hmm. <laughs> and that can be, that can lead to hijinks and shenanigans. Yeah. So I thought it was pretty fun and we already started playing it. So the goal or the challenge is just going to be to beat the game together or solo. Cool. Whatever yeah. you choose. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. I like that. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next time. All right. Bye. Bye. As always, if you love this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or rate us on Spotify and check out our website, pressanybutton.net. You can listen to our raps, you can buy a t-shirt, and you can even download a free game. So check it out and we'll see you next time. Bye!